my name is Brenda Sharp. I'm a psychologist and life coach. So um, my background in specifically psychology, I studied in UON, University of Nairobi. In Nairobi, I run a private practice called Sharp Perceptions, where we offer a variety of you know, uh, mental health services and it's you know, creative. So we have a walk talk therapy, which we do at a park. We have somatic therapy, which incorporates like massage and uh, yoga and, you know, phys physical and like uh, talk therapy. Then we have virtual therapy in which I am engaged with GALC. So, uh, I have been interested in the medical field from childhood. Um, I'm, I'm a nandi, so I grew up being named after a medicine woman. So when I was a child, like old people used to take me to pick medicines for them because they believed I've inherited some, you know, powers within me to uh, give healing. But when I went to campus, I actually studied mathematics. But then I would find myself going to the library to read a lot of psychology books and things like that and so when I was in second year towards third year I decided to change my course and I started to study psychology and then that's what I did in uni. I would say therapy is for everyone. Therapy, therapy is basically healing yeah and Everyone needs healing. Uh, we have like social traumas, you know, uh, individual traumas, all these things. Uh, when I first studied psychology, one of the conditions we are given is that you have to go through personal growth therapy. So you would think because you have the knowledge, you don't need the therapy. But I realized like the more I benefited from that, the more I'm better placed to support others. And so I would say anybody can benefit from therapy. And uh, as long as you feel the need to find a sounding board, someone who can listen, can give perspective, who can just allow you to validate yourself in a way, that's, that, that's something valuable to tap into. So maybe before I respond to that, I could mention that like um, around just the therapy needs, like who can benefit from therapy. There are specific people who would benefit more from therapy. For instance, uh, people with mental health uh, challenges. So this could be conditions that have already been defined, such as uh, anxiety, depression, uh, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder, all these mental health conditions. They would really benefit from therapy, even if they are working with psychiatric support. Also, people who have experienced childhood trauma, people who have challenges in their social environment, relationship issues, anxiety issues, uh, you know, work-related issues, uh, already it's being seen that, you know, most of like um, health conditions today can be linked to childhood trauma and childhood experiences. Most of the like, um, conditions that we experience, life lifestyle conditions today can be linked to stress, stressful conditions. So I would say like if people are experiencing this intense stress that they are unable to deal with, then it would be more advisable that they reach out for therapy services. Uh, what should one expect from therapy? So one uh, first step is actually seeking out for that service. And I think that's usually the hardest part to reach out and say, okay, who is a therapist? Can I write to them and say, I need service? That's usually the hardest, but I think it's the bravest. The moment you step out and say, yeah, I need help. I would like to support, to seek for that support. That's the like vulnerability is power, that's power. Then after that, a session is booked with you. But before the, section, the session, there's um, an informed consent for. Basically, the informed consent is just for you to understand what therapy is about before you get into that session. So it would have maybe details about defining the process, about just telling you about all these details, why, like how therapy works, all these details about like unconditional positive regard, acceptance, you know, so that you understand that when I go there, my, my, my whatever I'm sharing will remain confidential. So that informed consent will kind of give you that guideline. Once a session is set up, then an in, that consultation session is like an intake. 
I would say first interview your therapist. It's good that you find, because it's very personal, it's good that you find someone who you feel, you know, you can connect with and speaks to your heart. So interview them, ask them questions, ask them, ask them if they, you know, they're relevant for your needs, ask them things about like the process. And then after that, they will take you through a question. So what, well, what I would usually do is then I will take an intake just to get a whole summary of this individual about their background, about like their present moment, all these holistic elements. Once we have a holistic element, including what has brought them to therapy, we set an intention together. So, um, so currently I'm engaged with GALC to offer virtual therapy to uh, individuals from the LGBTQ community. I think this is really um, a wonderful thing that GALC is doing because there are special like, uh, psychological needs for the LGBTQ community. We already know that our society has certain like, limitations in terms of acceptance. Uh, we really see how uh, individuals from the LGBTQ community experience like, you know, traumatic events such as you know, attacks and all these security risks. And that affects somebody emotionally, physiologically, spiritually, you know, physically, and they need that support. So I think GALC extending that and identifying therapists that can work with these individuals is truly amazing. So that's what I do. And GALC has a platform. So on the website, uh, if you go to galc.org, it's G-A-L-C-K dot O-R-G, you, uh, you'll find down there booking like counseling appointments. So if you click on the counseling appointment, it will lead you to a page where you can now fill in the details and book a session. Once you book a session, like this is sent out to like a, a therapist. And once an, a therapist is identified, what happens once I receive like a request from you, uh, I will reach out to you and then we agree together on a day when we book the session. GALC um, basically offers up to at least five sessions to individuals and uh, including one consultation session. So ideally, therapy does not solve the problems. What it does is that it equips you. We are on a constant journey of healing and then you're able to use these tools that you've been equipped to to find healing for yourself. So personally, like I mentioned, I run a private practice, Sharp Perceptions. So you can reach me via email, sharpperceptions at gmail.com or 07-39425-425. Uh, what I would say as a parting shot is that I think therapy is valuable and like uh, self-awareness. And when I say therapy, from just self-work to working with someone, I think it's a valuable process for every individual and specifically for the LGBTQ community. I think it's really valuable. Already we say like when um, events, security threats happen, it's it triggers the individual who we associate with. And I think working with someone and who can help you journey this process uh, can be a valuable resource. And so I would say, don't be afraid, don't be ashamed of seeking out for help. Uh, the other thing uh, I would say as a parting shot, can I give two parting shots? <laughs> Is a skill that I think anyone and everyone should be able to tap into. And I think it's the skill of your breath. Your breath is always available to you. If any overwhelming situation presents to you, just observe your breath. A lot of times we find ourselves holding or you know, you know, shallow breathing, but just observe what's happening on your breath. And for a moment, take a deep breath in and a long breath out. And within you, there are resources that are able to support your process of healing. Tap into them and always uh, know that you have those resources.